welcome dear brothers and sisters in the studio of the Sabbath School Department by the General Conference. With the help of the Lord, we wish to, to present to you a new Sabbath School lesson. And this time we're going to speak about the Holy Communion, the Holy Supper. And we're together with our dear sister Raquel Orsi. She just came from China and we're very pleased to be able to present to you our new Sabbath School lesson. Before we go into the detail of the lesson and our study, we wish to have a silent prayer. Please join us with the prayer. Amen. <clears throat> Let's have a short review on the structure of the lesson. We have the introduction testimony, what the Lord's Supper is about, and it is a very important ordinance given us by God. We do not believe in sacraments, as some churches believe, but we do believe in ordinances, and the ordinances are very important if we want to obey the biblical truth and all the commandments that uh, the Lord Jesus has left as an inheritance to his people, then we need to follow also these ordinances and one of them is the Lord's Supper and the washing of the feet. Now how are we going to continue? The first under title is Jesus' Great Desire and that's the connection with the previous lesson as well as the introduction to this uh, lesson. Uh, we are going to see the atmosphere in which Jesus was and where the disciples were and and what uh, their thoughts and desire were and how the whole situation was. <clears throat> and uh, the second undertitle is the symbol of the holy bo the ho of his body, excuse me, <clears throat> the symbol of his body. And we're going to see that uh, we're talking about the bread and the connection with the washing of the feet and how Jesus present his bread, the meaning of this important symbol. <clears throat> And uh, we continue with another undertitle, the symbol of his blood. Obviously, we're talking about the wine. And uh, the wine is represented in this lesson as a very important symbol. That's why we have several undertitles and several questions that are dealing with this symbol. or different meaning of it and how we need to understand the deepness of its symbol and what this means for our salvation. It's very important that we take care and explain the symbols so that every single member remember very well the meaning of the Holy Supper and those who are not yet members, they, it's very good for them to know it because they can uh, understand it better and with the help of the Lord decide to become members. <clears throat> Uh, the, blood, the blood of the new covenant is the, another expression that Jesus himself made uh, related to the wine and what that means, it's very important. Uh, the remember his suffering and sacrifice is another very important symbol uh, that is related to the wine but also partially to the bread. And uh, question number seven is very important, the Lord's Supper in unity. And we have these two symbols, the cup and the bread, and both of them symbolize actually <clears throat> the Church of God. They symbolize this unity and this consistency of, uh, uh, of actually importance of every uh, single member in the holistic of the presentation of the entire body. And uh, this is a very nice, a very important question. The lesson has eight questions, and uh, this is another under title. Before we end the, the, the lesson, uh, keeping the Savior sacrifice valid in mind, <coughs> so vividly in mind, and that's because we need to remember this ordinance. And uh, this is similar like the Sabbath. The Sabbath is supposed to be remembered so that it could be sanctified, and similar way also is the Holy Supper, why and how this is explained very well in this lesson. It, the whole lesson is very holistic, it is almost impossible to put the, the heavy point or central point in some of the places because each and every questions have very important part uh, and, uh, in the entire topic, <clears throat> so we need to 
really uh, be very well prepared and concentrated by presenting the lesson so that we not overdo in the time. <clears throat> With the help of the Lord, we will go back now and we will comment to every single question. <clears throat> enjoying the comments also of our dear sister with us and in the uh, background we have the Leonardo da Vinci's uh, Holy Supper illustration and it's, uh, it's uh, a sermon for itself because he intends to paint every single disciple according to the character and according to the reactions they have in that very uh, important situation and partially we are going to discuss these reactions also uh, during the study of every single question. <clears throat> Let's go with the first questions. And what did Jesus say to his disciples the night that he was betrayed <clears throat> when they were to together with the last Passover meal? What uh, did the Jesus do? How he established this new ordinance? And... Uh, what was the atmosphere uh, with the disciples? Um, Jesus knew that he was in a crossway. Um, something will finish and something will begin. Um, and everything depends on the um, ordinances that will be established. Before that, uh, already the foot washing was established. And that was something completely new and um, difficult for the disciples to understand and even to accept it. But um, that was very important because the idea of the Passover was more restricted to the family circle. In this case, with the foot washing, feet washing, the, the, the extended of the communion and the relationship was open toward not only the family Christ, family circle, but also to the believers and church members. Now, um, a similar idea is reproduced now in the Lord's Supper. So we find a supper as the Passover also was a supper, but we find some elements added and some missing. Uh, here in Luke 22, 14 and 15, Jesus explained clearly to the disciples that I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. So. This was a very historical, prophetical uh, moment and especially uh, with a great significance in the plan of salvation. And the moment between the old and the new dispensation was regulated and will be remembered according to these new two institutions the feet washing and now the Passover. And with this introductory Bible text, we understand that this crucial moment is what we are going to study in this lesson, step by step, with the symbols, the significance, and the parallel with the Passover and the um, Lord's Supper. Thank you very much, Raquel. Actually, <clears throat> we would like to remember what uh, the previous lesson was talking about, the washing of the feet, and uh, let's remember the atmosphere that the disciples have with their proud pride, pride and uh, their desire of supremacy. But what happened is that uh, the Lord Jesus took the basin and he washed the feet of the, his disciples, and they were so ashamed. And uh, this... Uh, um, the spirit of humbleness and the spirit of spirituality enter in their hearts and actually through this action also Judah received the last warning and the last invitation to repent and Judah was not uh, a person that was non-member of the church or society he was a Jewish man he was circumcised and he was he had all the signs of every member of the church at that time, the people of God, the Jewish nation. 
so it was not any exception in that case it's uh, the only um, difference in that case was actually his uh, uh, unclean heart which Jesus mentioned that one of you is unclean and that was Judah and uh, now in this atmosphere we begin and enter in the Holy Supper also the testimony explained that uh, Jesus Christ himself was in a very special spiritual atmosphere and it says that he was um, as the a third line of the testimony says he was now in the shadow of the cross and the pain was torturing his heart so he was in a tremendous mental pain he was struggling with the idea that he's going to die and he's going to give his life uh, sacrifice himself but perhaps that was not the biggest pain the biggest pain was that he was supposed to be charged with the sins of the entire world and be separated from the Father. Imagine how big was the torment that he had in his mind in this moment and his suffering actually does not begin in the cross but his mental suffering uh, and anguish actually begin much before that. That's why uh, if you remember in his prayer uh, he actually the, the blood come out of uh, <clears throat> as, a, as a sweat out of his skin it was so so terrible was the anguish and the, and uh, um, this uh, this personal pain and and torture of uh, of the toads they were just expecting him so let's uh, combine all this and and have that in mind this atmosphere and then we can go forwards and see how jesus introduced this new ordinance uh, into the disciples but also into his church to us until our days and we're going to see that in the big details he explained what need to be done and what that means for us <clears throat> and for him. The second question says, after he washed their feet, what did Jesus give to the disciples? And what did the blessed piece of bread that he gave them represent? Let's enter into the details of the symbolic. And he is now mm, breaking the bread. So we, he prayed before breaking the bread. He broke the bread and he gave peace to each, each one of the disciples. But he also uh, explained what that symbol means, what it is. Um, we have here the bread as a middle point of this sin. And it's important to consider that also in the Passover we had the unleavened bread and needed to be eaten also uh, from all the members of the family. Uh, now again is an extended circle um, in the Lord's Supper and Jesus explained very clearly that bread, this bread that is broken and is given and is eating is the body of Jesus, his own body. It's interesting to consider the active process that we find in, in, in this Bible text. We see here that Jesus took and bless and break and give and they eat. So this process is um, important when we apply to our spiritual life. And in reality, our conversion, our personal experience with Jesus go exactly through the same way. So we need to accept Jesus in our life. Uh, we will bless through this acceptance. We need to break our selves, uh, internal um, sins, uh, weakness, uh, and bad tendencies. And we need to give us to God so that we can eat from his um, wonderful truth so that the fruit of the Spirit can be part of us. So this is only possible when we are partakers of the life, 
ministry, suffering, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So it's important that we realize that in the same way that in the old dispensation every Israelite needed to be partaker of the Passover, eat from the lamb, eat from the bread. Now Jesus himself was the lamb and the bread. So we don't need to diversify too much our understanding. We need to focus our understanding in Jesus Christ because he is the beginner and the finisher of our faith. And this important moment in the plan of salvation was explained to the disciples the same way that now we are studying this lesson. And we need to be aware that every time that we have the privilege to be part of the Lord's Supper, we are going through this process of renewing our vows, reconfirming our promises to God, and also a revert, revival of our spiritual, express, uh, spiritual life and experience through eating, taking, receiving the blessing, breaking ourselves, give ourselves and eat from Jesus in order to be part of him. Thank you very much. It's such a deep symbol, <clears throat> the bread of life. I mean, the, the Passover, it, the central point of the Passover in the Old Testament was the lamb. And as it was explained, the lamb was a symbol of Jesus Christ. But now the lamb will be slain. Just a few days uh, after the Passover uh, is uh, have been uh, uh, have taken place, or after this supper, actually the 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 lamb will be slain, <clears throat> and Jesus wanted to make it sure that the disciples understand this transition of the Old and the New Testament, and he wanted to make sure that now in the New Testament. Since the sacrifice has been given, it's not necessary to have the lamb anymore inside of the Passover. Now the Passover will be without lamb. Without lamb, why? Because the, the lamb was slain and the, the, and the lamb will resurrect. The, the lamb will not be anymore there. The lamb will be in heaven. We will have our um, high priest in the heavenly kingdom we will have our king of kings and he the son of god will uh, take uh, possession of his uh, uh, supremacy again he will return to his father in heaven and this is such a wonderful symbol but at the same time the body <clears throat> need to be eaten the lamb have to be eaten the symbol have to continue but now we're not eating the lamb anymore because the lamb is no longer there, but we are eating the bread of life. The bread of life is a symbol of the word of God. It's a symbol of the church as such. It's a symbol of the body of Christ. It's a symbol of the life of Christ. And all this connects together of incredible uh, remembrance of what Christ really did for us and how he sacrificed himself for the humanity. <clears throat> there is more art testimonies of the Sarah of Ages. I remember one that is uh, specifically from the section of the, the, the Holy Supper that says that actually uh, through Christ and through, sacri through his sacrifices marked every leaf of bread. Every bread that actually exists today is because Christ sacrificed himself and make it possible that we live in grace and if we live in grace we have water we have bread we have life if Christ will not sacrifice himself we will be dead today the humanity will be extinguished will disappear and that is uh, something very important also to remember it's not only the bread of the Holy Supper but any bread any bread of life and bread of life actually is mark with the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Our existence is marked with the Jesus Christ. And all that is combining the symbol of the bread as a symbol of life. Let's go forwards and see question number three because 
topic is very big and we don't want to extend too much. <clears throat> Question number three says, what other explanation did he give sig signifying which will soon take, what will soon, soon take place? Excuse me. What did his words imply for the future and where they will be the again celebrated in the ordinance? We find here that not only the interiorization of the bread was important to eat it, to digest it, and the process how through our personal experience Jesus became part of us and we become partakers of the divine nature, but need to be remembered. And this is extremely important because the natural reaction uh, of every individual is to have the wish from something and in the moment that this become a possession maybe lose importance and even can be forgotten so because time and circumstances change we have the tendency to forget and to put aside or even um, become indifferent to something that originally was extremely important for us. In this specific case, Jesus mentioned to the disciples that was not only once in time or only something to do for the moment, but this need to endure and to persevere in our process of thinking. And this has to do with remembrance. Um, when we eat the, the bread that is blessed during the Lord's Supper, this is a, a specific uh, moment and very solemn moment. But w this moment needs to follow us until the next time. And this is what Jesus wanted to express when he said to the disciples, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. So from one Lord's Supper until the next, we need to remain and keep in mind what this means. And eat constantly from this bread of life, from the Word of God, from Jesus Christ himself. So the act and the follow-up of the act is considered in this important element and is confirmed again through um, Apostle Paul in the Bible text from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 24 when again is um, underlined or emphasized this do in remembrance of me. So, doing and keep in mind. Thank you very much. Actually, the symbol of the bread is not new in the Old Testament. In the sanctuary, we have the symbol, and it says in the sanctuary, the 12, the shower bread, and uh, <clears throat> each one of the 12 bread represented the tribe, one of the tribes of Israel. And here, once again, we have the symbol that the... Uh, the bread symbolized the body of Christ, and the body of Christ we know is the church because Christ is the head, but the body is the church. So we have this continuation of the symbolic, uh, very clear explained here, and that's why actually Apostle Paul speaks that if somebody eat from the bread without recognizing it, he is uh, eating a condemnation against himself which means that if somebody uh, participate in the supper, he takes the bread, which means he eats the body of Christ, but he does not believe that the church that is giving him that bread is the body of Christ, is the only church of God. He actually is taking condemnation about himself because... Uh, he is not a member of that church, obviously, because he does not believe it in it. But he has taken the supper uh, for the forgiveness of his sins and to recognize that he is part of that body. 
but in reality he is not. So we see this, uh, this contradiction in behavior that can happen, and that's why we uh, follow the clear biblical doctrine that only members can be part of that celebration of the bread and the wine because they are the one that recognize the, the bread. They recognize the body of Christ. They recognize the church of God the 12th tribe of Israel or the spiritual Israel that is taking place uh, or, or it's inheriting the blessings and the um, ordinances of God from the Old and the New Testament. <clears throat> but let's continue now with the next questions and we're going to see a lot of important things uh, related to the Holy Supper. And here we're uh, entering into the symbol of the blood of Christ or the wine. After giving thanks, what did he give to the disciples? And what did the wine in the cup that he gave them represent? We need atonement. Uh, we need forgiveness. Um, we need a completely transformation um, from our sinful nature to a nature that God can work with and transform according to his image. And this process is only possible through the blood shed by Jesus Christ in Calvary. And this symbol of the wine represents Christ's broken body and spilled blood. And this important moment that will happen very soon after this Lord's Supper um, try to prepare the mind of the disciple for this special situation and the purpose was also to help them in the process of consecration uh, reconciliation and surrender uh, their own wills to the will of God in the same way as Christ was doing uh, in so doing, offering his own body, his own life in sacrifice in order to achieve forgiveness and atonement for saints. So we see here something very significant that needed to be also added to the receiving of the bread, also wine, this um, grape juice without fermentation that needed to be drink is also another element that we need in our process of completely transformation. Uh, please think for a moment in the Passover, they were not drinking um, grape juice but still the blood was an important element during all this ritual. We know that blood from the lamb was taken and was sprinkled upon the doorpost and the front post um, of the door. And this is very interesting because that was the, the first element that identified this family because the door was marked so it was very clear that no plague will come to this house. So if we try to transfer this same situation now in the moment when Christ is with his disciples, we understand that this um, spilling of the blood need to be in the internal body of our spiritual heart. And for this confession, a repentance, a departing from sin need to be a fact in order to receive the atonement. So we find a solid and a liquid element in the combination of the Last Supper. And this is interesting because blood is the symbol of life also in the Bible and we can only receive a new life when we are partakers of the life, ministry, passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is the reason why we need to remember the spirit of prophecy 
remind us and even suggested that at least one hour every day we need to meditate upon uh, Calvary, upon the passion and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And question three and four is all about that. Um, we need to remember what really life means according to divine dimension. Uh, is to die to sin and live for good. Uh, die for Satan and live for Christ. And this is important for us to make this experience, to remember it, to confirm that, and to follow in every single step of our lives. Thank you very much. It's very interesting to symbol, and uh, if we go in the details of all the symbolic and all the teaching we can uh, understand from it, it can be extended really uh, into a seminar and a topic, but we don't want to extend ourselves so much. I just want to uh, mention that here in the testimony and uh, the line number five, I will show you here in the screen, it says, <coughs> that we seem to be passing through the garden consecrated by the agony of him to bore the sin of the world and that is very important to be remembered that actually in the Passover we are supposed to imagine we're supposed to um, uh, to understand better the agony of Christ we, we need to get a little bit of it uh, by breaking the body and seeing how his body is broken and how his uh, uh, the wine, a symbol of his blood is spilled and it is given to us and we need to remember the agony, the pain he has in his soul, in his mind in this very moment because that is not just something that is given to us for free and we don't, you know, nothing happened and uh, we enjoy life and you're a Christian and you're forgiven. That's not the case. Actually, the, our forgiveness and our salvation cost enormous agony, enormous pain and enormous price that have been paid for you and for me so that we can have this privilege today. And the Holy Supper is concentrating uh, all this agony, all this sacrifice in it, in this symbol, and we can receive a little blank of it, a little remembrance of it. And it's very important actually that uh, when we preach before we give the Holy Supper that we really remember this sacrifice and uh, that this is not turning into uh, a kind of... Uh, a ritual that we are repeating automatically <clears throat> but we really mean what uh, holistically what that uh, really is uh, for us and let's go to question number five <clears throat> for what purpose was Jesus blood to be shed and uh, being an ordinance of the new covenant who is invited to part participate of it what are we going to say here Raquel um the repentance of sin, the atonement for this sin, individually and collectively, was the main purpose of the plan of salvation. And this was only come to fulfillment through the blood that was shed through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we find something very important here because as we find in the Bible text, we read in Matthew 26, 28, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. And Exodus 12, 43 is the parallel um, event from the Passover. This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Especially because the Lord's Supper have to do with the passion and death of Jesus Christ, um, a real understanding and a deep knowledge about the meaning of the symbols, the purpose of this ordinance, need to be understood, accepted, 
and praxis for every individual in order to remember to give the right value of, for these um, special events in the religious life in the personal experience also. So no stranger, no stranger shall eat thereof. Strangers meet somebody that is not connected with the body of Christ, somebody that don't know the truth, that is not partaker of the same spirit and the same knowledge. Why? Because um, to be part of so a holy and secret moment will be execrated through ignorance and um, lack of knowledge. So it's very important to understand that this is one of the most important ordinances that we have in the church, especially because we need two important elements. We need to accept it, we need to take it, we need to eat it, but at the same time we need to remember and this means that it's a continuation in the process of transformation of eating and drinking and become partaker of the life of Jesus. Thank you, Raquel. <clears throat> the reason why we do not uh, give Holy Supper to a stranger or to a person that is not baptized is not because we feel superior to others that are not baptized. It's not because uh, the members of the church are something better or, or different than the people that are non-members of the church, uh, but it's because uh, of uh, this ordinance of the Lord that uh, repentant sinners, that baptized sinners, those who have already been covered with the righteousness of Christ, they have this opportunity to share and to be part of the blood and the bread or the, or the flesh of Jesus Christ. And those who are not yet partakers of it, they have the privilege to be prepared and to be part of this body of Christ. It's also important to understand that if somebody is a member already but he lives in an open sin and the church have condemned this person openly because of his behavior, he's obviously also not uh, supposed to be part of uh, or to take part of the wine and the bread because of uh, the lack of repentance. But uh, everybody needs to do his best so that the sinner can really understand uh, that, uh, like Judah, uh, and uh, that the sinner need to be invited by the washing of the feet, need to be invited with the Holy Supper into a true repentance and to a true change of life. That's how we can continue growing and continue our process of sanctification. But let's continue to question number six and see <clears throat> the celebrating of the Lord's Supper. Uh, who would be the center of their thoughts every time they drink the fruit of the wine and how many of the disciples drunk of it? And this is an interesting moment because there is... Uh, uh, a little mystery here, I remember Raquel will mention, and that remember his suffering and sacrifice. Who is the disciple that didn't took of the wine and what happened? Okay, we find here um, a new concept that Jesus introduced and is the New Testament. We know about the covenant uh, with with um, Adam, with Noah, with Abraham, with Moses and Israel, and now we find here the New Testament, we find here the New Covenant. It's the beginning of a new dispensation, no more sacrifice of animals, no more lambs needed in the Passover. Jesus Christ himself is the sacrifice, is the lamb and the participation is requested under deep knowledge, understanding and active reaction 
toward a change. Especially because we are commemorating the Lord's death. So this is one of the most important elements in the history of the plan of salvation beside the resurrection and the ministry now in heaven that Jesus performed on behalf of us uh, through the Lord's death every one of us receive life and when we understand properly this new covenant that we come in through eating and through drinking we sign this agreement to be partakers of the same life and also from the same death. Jesus needed to die not because of his own sins, because he didn't have any, but because of ours. He needed to atone all the sin through a perfect sacrifice. And we need to die every single day. So this experience needs to be ours. And this go only through eating of the bread of life, that is Jesus Christ and his word, and drinking, asking for the forgiveness from the remission, the atonement of sin, that only Jesus, can, Jesus Christ can give it to us. So, but these important events, the passion or suffering, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ um, connected our spiritual experience and bring it to an uplifted uh, understanding through a very important um, experience that go through an um, interiorization of this knowledge and at the same time a performing and keeping in mind and thoughts in remembrance in our daily life. Thank you very much Raquel. It's very interesting the situation here. Similar like in the time of the washing of the feet, Jesus did something that really shake the the disciples also here by the supper uh, by giving the bread and even before uh, actually uh, part taking part of the wine Jesus mentioned something to the disciples and he says one of you is going to betray me and this is actually the intrigue here in the picture in the background uh, how the disciples were so uh, shocked by that news and everybody will say it's me, Lord. It's me. No, it's, it cannot be, and uh, uh, and and this is very very important part also of the Holy Supper because through the the supper actually and through this uh, words of uh, uh, of prophecy that at the same time was accusing one of the disciples. Every one of the disciples researched you his own heart. And he was looking, it is me, it is me, Lord. And we know that Judah was uh, the disciple that uh, uh, the Lord says that he will take part with the bread and that after that he left the table. So it, the Holy Supper is an invitation to participate in the suffering of Christ, but the Holy Supper is also an invitation that we research deeply our heart and we answer that question, <clears throat> am I the one that is going to betray Christ? Am I that they're going to depart from the church? Do I believe everything what's, what the master has said? Do I really follow all the ordinances and laws that Jesus Christ has given us? So this, this um, event is actually part of the celebration and it's a part of the spiritual preparation and a part of our spiritual growing and let's see and uh, follow question number seven what's actually <coughs> the cup and the bread the bread also means for us what does it mean to partake in the cup of blessing and the broken bread what did the Apostle Paul mean when he says that being many we are one bread and one body by partaking of that one bread? 
what we understand, what do we understand, Raquel, <coughs> in the cup and in the bread? The unity in truth, in faith, and in action are three main elements presented in 1 Corinthians 10, 16, and 17. So, every one of us that through baptism become a member of the body of Christ is not an isolated element or an inactive member, but need to be coordinated, need to be joined together with all the rest of the members inside of the body, the church, and need to be led by the head of the body that is Jesus Christ, need to be nourished through the bread of life, through the, um, the word of God, and we need to drink from the symbol of life that emanated from Jesus Christ through his forgiveness and through his love, mercy and grace, we realize our shortcomings and also um, help us to the unity of the faith to become one in action. And this is extremely important if we connected the previous um, act that was the washing of the feet. So reconciliation among equals and then also forgiveness and reconciliation with the higher authority, God. So it's important to respect the steps and to follow exactly in the same way as Jesus has performed. And this is the reason why he entrusted to us this um, ordinance. Not because it's needed to repeat it as a routine, but it's important to fix in our minds the need that we have from God, the need that we have from one another, in order to succeed personally and collectively under the guidance and blessing of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. It's a <clears throat> very important topic we're talking about. And I wish to mention uh, a few lines of the second testimony, which is uh, very, very important here. It says, God is leading a people out of the world upon the exalted platform of eternal truth, the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Here we have these two elements that are so important, the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The New Testament, the symbol of the New Testament is the blood of Jesus. And the symbol of the New Testament is also that the commandments of God are written in our heart and not only in the stones in Sinai. And this is the New Testament. This is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We receive forgiveness, but we receive also salvation. And we receive it for free. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the bread and the wine, actually are the symbol of that payment that have been given. And that means that our sins are paid off. And we have the right to enter and to inherit the eternal life for free. And this free gift that we receive by God uh, is because of the payment that have been made for us. And the payment, the symbol of that payment is the Holy Supper. And if we do not participate, if we deny the participation in the Holy Supper, actually indirectly we deny to participate of receiving that eternal gift that is the payment for my salvation. It's so, so important that right understanding, the appreciation of the Holy Supper and the spiritual atmosphere in which we enter to practice and celebrate that uh, holy action which is the ordinance of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and let's see something else when we continue. I'm going to question 8 and this is uh, a very important part of uh, <clears throat> of the ordinance as well. <clears throat> For how long will the Lord's Supper be observed? And what privilege will those who now share the symbol of the body and blood of Jesus enjoy one day? 
how long are we going to celebrate it and what uh, what kind of incredible promise hath Jesus Christ giving to all of us? This is a glorious answer, especially because if we consider that to commemorate the liberation of Egypt, the Passover was established. Uh, the commemoration of the liberation of sin was the Lord's Supper. And the liberation of the sin of this world will be commemorated in the world wedding supper when we will be with Jesus in heaven. So we find three different suppers. And all the three have to do with liberation, with the end of a period and the beginning of another one. The night before they will be set free from the slavery in Egypt, they took the Passover. Now that we are um, <coughs> hoping and waiting for the complete liberation of sin from ourselves and from this world, we are taking the Lord's Supper. But then in heaven, the Lord will present to us the wedding supper. It's the third supper that we can take together with Jesus. And now will be not a, um, a sad event, but will be an extremely joyful and happy moment. Because no more disturbance of sin and death. Thank you very much. It's very interesting the <coughs> statement that Apostle Paul say, uh, says here in 1 Corinthians, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till his come. The participation in the, in the supper of the Lord is, uh, it's, is not only the participation in the symbol, it's a testimony. We give a testimony in front of the world, in front of the church, in front of the other members, but also in front of the universe that Jesus Christ really died and we do believe in him and we do have accepted him and we want to participate not only in the baptism, not only in the washing of the feet, but we want to participate in his flesh and blood. We want to be part of him. We want to be... Uh, <clears throat> to inherit the divine nature of Christ, to have the righteousness of Christ, to have the faith of Christ, to have the nature of Christ, everything that he have and he have given to us. And by eating the bread and, and, and participating in the, in the wine, <clears throat> we actually testify in front of the universe. And this is... Uh, action forever. This has its uh, incredible consequences. <clears throat> the same way as the Sabbath, it says, will be celebrated also in the new heaven, also the Passover will be celebrated one day and when all the saved ones come, Jesus will serve again that Passover. And this Passover is another reflection and projection actually by celebrating the Passover here we say that we will be, uh, we believe we will be in that last or that <clears throat> special Passover, heavenly Passover, when Jesus Christ will serve us again as he served his disciples on earth. This is uh, the connection between heaven and earth, is the connection between the eternal life that begins here and continues there. Dear brothers and sisters, be in good courage. Enjoy this Sabbath school lesson and uh, let's, uh, with the help of the Lord, all of us can participate in the bread and in the wine, which are enormous, incredible, important symbols and ordinance given us for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.